Hello again. This month's question is, how can I use permaculture thinking to design something like a livelihood for myself? Um, so the nice thing about permaculture is that whilst we um, initially might think that it's best applied to food growing, because of course we learn how does nature work? What are the principles of success of nature? Um, it's very easy to take those principles of success of things like uh, each element has many functions or uh, each function is supported by many elements or um, diversity and beneficial relationships, setting those things up. It's very easy to take those things, those principles from nature and apply them to a kind of a, a managed natural system of food, food production. Whereas if we start saying, how do we apply these principles to uh, the way we live? Um, personally ourselves where how do I make a livelihood then that might at first sound like it's a bit trickier and I suppose um, to some degree maybe there's a little bit more thinking involved but if we start taking those same principles and applying them to something like how do we make a financial income because most of us um, do live in a money system and we earn money in order to pay for things because um, we are quite um, separated up very often from the people we trade with that maybe we would only ever do a one-way exchange with somebody I need something they've made it but they live 200 miles away and they post it to me um, and we never have a an opportunity to meet in person to for me to do something for them in exchange so money allows us to bypass those inequalities and make a, a fair exchange in the moment so we earn money so the first thing I would say with the permaculture design is that there's two aspects to that so with any system whether we're looking at food production in the garden or collecting water maybe for us to use directly or to use in the garden you have your inputs your inflow and you have your outputs or your outflow and uh, in systems thinking this is the stock and flow diagram you have kind of uh, what comes in then you have your stock and what goes out and that might be the stock of food in the garden so your inputs are sun and water and nutrients and so on and then the outflow from the garden some of it comes to us so it becomes an input to our system our body system and then there are outputs to that and um, and of course in our modern systems most of the things we use come through pipes and cables and supermarket delivery lorries and uh, they disappear off in the form of heat or down flush toilet pipes and that kind of thing so um, there's two approaches to if we need more of something then we can either look to get more of it or we could reduce our losses and, uh, and we can use the same approach to of course um, not just fertility in the garden but how do we retain fertility in the garden by cycling nutrients that might otherwise be wasted compost and maybe humanure and so on um, but we can also look at the uh, spending in the same way so we could earn more or we could spend less uh, or have less loss so I would certainly approach it from that perspective of if we're doing more things for ourselves then we need to buy less now of course if you're growing food for yourself in the modern context we can't really make a good argument for how that's a good idea from a financial perspective because the price of carrots of potatoes for instance in the supermarket even if they're organic uh, is a fraction of the time that you would spend to do those things if you were to then use that time to say do IT or something and earn 15 20 pounds an hour so the food we grow from the perspective of the time we spend on it is expensive but of course it's not just about the quantity of the food it's about the quality and so for me growing our own food is a hugely important thing because it connects me to the land it um, provides something for my body which is much more healthy than much of what I might be able to buy from elsewhere so we can save money by doing certain things for ourselves of course there's many things that that we spend without realizing so uh, a classic thing now is the direct debit so it used to be that a bill would come through the post and you would look at it and say oh my god look at all the money we spent on electricity we might need to um, 
be a bit more careful about switching off lights and so on. And I particularly noticed this when I was teaching on Sark last summer, um, on basically on the island, it's a Channel Island, and their electricity comes from one power station, which is fueled by diesel, which comes on a boat from Guernsey and from further afield. And so they're paying four, five, six times as much for their electricity as we pay on the mainland. And so when we go over there, there's this very interesting dynamic where the locals are switching off all the lights and trying to be really careful with electricity because it's so expensive. And the people that go there have no concept of how much more expensive it is. So they're using electricity as if it was so much more cheap. And then also wondering why it's more expensive to go off to a B&B on Sark because they're not appreciating that they're using more power and that it's costing the the proprietor more money to, to do it. So um, there's that general awareness of where are we leaking? And of course, direct debits were a very smart idea framed in the idea that it's going to save us time and energy because we don't have to think about writing out a check and all of that. But in the past, we used to get that bit of information that suddenly made us think, hang on a sec, <laughs> look at all the money we've spent. Whereas now we don't even see that number. It flicks past in our bank account and we barely notice it, let alone start thinking maybe I should do something differently. So firstly, I would say uh, be much better at monitoring where the money goes. And that would be the same for anything that we're looking at, nutrients and someone in the garden, um, leaks of water from our water bath or the gutter that overflows and doesn't fill the water back properly, all of those things, they're opportunities to collect something that's being lost. So where are our leaks in the system? So where are the leaks in the feeding in system, but also where are the leaks in the system going out? Where am I losing time, which might be earning me an opportunity for me to earn money? Where am I losing money because I'm spending a lot of things that I'm not even really noticing about that I don't need? And by reducing that need for financial income, immediately we can start to claw some of our life back and do things perhaps that we enjoy doing because a livelihood is not just about how we earn money. It's about um, do we enjoy our life? What's the quality of life that we have? And our world has focused this so much now on to earn more and more money so that you someday you could retire and enjoy it. And many people get to that point and don't live for very much longer because they've exhausted themselves. So for me, part of my quality of life is how much do I need to earn and then pitch it about that level. I don't need to be earning huge amounts of money because I've pitched my lifestyle at that place. It's also worth thinking about um, where you're earning your income from. So you may have a primary job. Some Many of us only have one job. And of course, that puts us at risk in the same way as the farmer who is selling to a supermarket, his entire crop goes to the supermarket, then if the supermarket turns around and says, actually, it's not quite up to standard, we don't want it, then they're stuck because they've got nowhere to sell that. It's much more difficult for them to market that. So it's the eggs in one basket situation. And uh, many of us find ourselves in that situation in the modern world. So in nature, we find a diversity uh, that each important function is met by um, many elements. So I teach and I earn a significant chunk of my income from teaching. Um, I do have IT to go back to if I need to, but I haven't had to do that. I get a bit of uh, income from royalties from my book. Um, I'm starting to do a little bit with online courses and uh, I also have a very small scale uh, retail business. So all of these things sort of sit side by side and it's very interesting how when one of them kind of uh, eases off a little bit, another one will pick up. So there's diversity in that. And it's also worth looking at where do we earn a living because um, there's something called the hierarchy of needs, which was simplified by a guy called Clayton Aldifer uh, a little while ago to three levels. And the basic level is, uh, the base level is existence. It's expressed as a triangle. You have existence that's meeting our physical needs like our food and water and energy and shelter and that kind of thing. And uh, on top of that, then there is uh, relatedness. That's all about how do we interact with each other. And then on top of that is growth. And the, the essence of it is that if we're hungry or we're thirsty or we're cold, then that's the thing that dominates us. That's the thing that we need to deal with. 
Whereas when we're we're meeting all those needs and we're comfortable, then we're looking at how the you know what are our relationships with people. I need to hang out with people, build those relationships. And once we feel safe in a social sense, then what is it that I'm here to do? So if we think about where we make our livelihood or where we make a living, where we earn money, then we can also say, where does it sit in that triangle? So if you're a supermarket, you're basically selling at the level of existence. And uh, because we don't value food so much anymore, then what's happening there is that you've got to basically sell a lot of food with small margins to earn money. And that's why it's difficult for small scale, organic permaculture growers to make a serious living because we don't value food anymore and we don't really want to pay too much above the basic level even if it's a really much better quality. If you're operating at the level of growth then it's ironic because it's food and growth but growth for human growth and so on then there's a potential to make quite a lot of money at that level because um, you know that's your entrepreneur and so on but at the same time, when a recession comes along, a financial problem, most people stop spending at the level of growth. They stop going to the cinema and, and buying DVDs and new computers and so on and focus on we need to pay the rent, we need to buy food. So uh, if you operate at the top of the triangle, then you're actually potentially vulnerable there. So it's, it's useful to think about where is your poly income coming from and to spread it across those three areas. Interestingly, as a permaculture teacher with some gardening skill, then I can grow food and I can teach people how to grow food to some degree, not as good as some, not as well as some people can. Um, but that's the level of existence. So I can make a living for myself. I can be valued by society at that level, but also teaching permaculture courses is at the top of the triangle. So, and I would say to some degree, in the middle because it's also about bringing people together and creating uh, networks of people. So look to pitch your livelihoods in those three different levels if you can, because that will also give you resilience. And there's also different um, approaches that we can use. There are different design uh, uh, frameworks, as we call them, including one that Luby McNamara developed uh, called the design web and uh, and she's very much been applying that to social design social landscape and uh, that's been a very successful way of looking at designing things like livelihoods but really I think what I would say is rather than just tell you a whole bunch of stuff is just start thinking about there are ethics there are principles um, how can we apply those principles because essentially a financial income is still the same system. It's still inputs, there's a stock, and then there's an output in the same way that there is in a garden or a water butt system or um, an electricity supply system with your uh, solar panels and your battery bank and so on. So just do a bit of thinking for yourself. And if you're really interested, uh, we also run a, a, a course about designing your own um, ethical livelihood which you can find out more about on the website.